In this video, we're going to talk about the keyword intersection. Because it's a keyword, I'm going to ask you to put a definition of intersection into your course notes. And I'd like you to put alongside that definition some examples. Now, you can take the three examples that I'm using in this lecture if you want, but it would help you memorize the definition of intersection if you came up with your own examples. Alternatively, you could take the challenge problem, which I will not solve in this lecture video, and you could solve it yourself in your course notes. Now, if you want to make sure that you have solved it correctly, you could uh, attend office hours and ask me if you've solved it correctly, and I would happily help you through the challenge problem or whatever examples you put alongside the definition of intersection in your course notes. Okay, so let's begin. In this video, we're going to uh, first give a definition of intersection, then we're going to give some useful properties, and then we're going to give three examples that I hope really drive home the definition of intersection, and then I'll present you with the challenge problem. Here we go. We are going to do just a little bit of file saving around to help us out. So first, our definition. The intersection of two sets, A and B, is the set of all elements that are in both A and B simultaneously, so at the same time. That is, it is the shared elements, the set of shared elements of A and B. So if we were going to write this out, we use this guy as the symbol. In LaTeX, when you guys put it in your course notes, it goes by the name CAP. So you'll go backslash C-A-P, CAP, and you'll say A intersect B. So we read that as A intersect B, and in LaTeX, this is known as CAP, C-A-P. So you use within two dollar signs, between two dollar signs, you'll go backslash, C A P. So A intersect B is equal to the set, we'll write it out in set builder notation, of all elements X such that X is in A and X is in B. That and is the crucial bit telling us that the element X is in both A and B simultaneously. So there we have it. There is our definition of A and uh, A intersect B. Okay, so I think it's helpful to see this in a Venn diagram. There is a classic image that people think of when they sit, think of intersection. So they represent A with a bunch of little elements inside this set A as just a circle. They think of B as a different set, which has its own elements somewhere in the circle representing B. And this shaded bit here is the overlap of elements that are both in A and B. So we might write A intersect B is equal to, and then the shaded bit. So this is like a graphical representation of the intersection so let's say that's Venn diagram of intersection of A, B. There we have it. Okay, let's move on to some other useful properties. Let's see. So the first one is um, intersection 
is a binary operation. So most operations I bet you think of are binary, like plus has a left-hand side and a right-hand side. It takes two arguments and it operates on those two things. If you're going to plus add things together, then you're going to add the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and you're going to get some new thing. The intersection is a binary operation that takes two sets and gives you a new set. Okay, so that's pretty good. It's a binary operation. It's commutative. You don't have to know what that word means immediately, but that means A intersect B is equal to B intersect A. You can like swap the order of the two sets the intersection acts on. Okay, and it's also associative, which means if you had A intersect B intersect C intersect D, well, really, you could group that. Say A intersect B, do that first. See, that's binary. And then you get a new set out of that. And you could intersect that with C and do that next. And then look, that makes it binary again, because here is one set and here is a second set. And then take that new set and intersect it with D. Okay, that is associative. And in fact, associative means you could put these parentheses around any two elements that you're going to intersect and it will all be equal. So these are some good properties of intersection. We will use them as they come up in the future. Okay, let's give some quick examples. It's probably going to be the most informative bit here. Example one. Let A B B two disjoint or mutually exclusive sets that is A and B have no shared elements. Look at that, I snuck in a new definition on you in the middle of this. Disjoint or mutually exclusive are synonyms and it means the set A let's say it consists of one, three, five, has no shared elements with two, four, six. The set B, which means A intersect B is equal to the empty set. There is nothing in the intersection between two disjoint sets. Fantastic. Let's get another example going. We'll make these uh, slightly more complex as we go. Example, let's let A equal all the letters of the English alphabet. And I'm not gonna write them all out, they go up to Z. And let's let B be the set of just the vowels. Okay, then here we go. A intersect B is equal to B. In fact, as a Venn diagram, you might think of this as B being a subset of A. And I'll let you fill in all the letters in each of the sets as you want. Okay, that one's pretty good. Let's do a third Again, slightly more challenging example. Let's let A equal the set of all the elements X such that zero is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to 4.4. And let's just be fun here. We'll make B be the set of all the elements X such that 1.8 is less than or equal to X less than or equal to 6.2. And we're going to go for a third color just to make this super visually appealing. C 
is going to be all of the elements x such that it's the integers. Well, some of them, the natural numbers, really. OK, so here we go. In this case, you can think of C as like the set of, here, I'm imagining a real number line. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Sounds good. And that's C. Let's draw out B next. And now b can be any real number, not just the integers. So I'm imagining in my head a straight line. And you know what I just remembered is I figured out how to do straight lines a little bit ago, but I didn't use the feature here. So let's see, 1.8 inclusive. So we'll put a square bracket there, roughly, at 1.8 and 6.2 to about there, inclusive. So we'll use a square bracket. Now, if we go back to black, we'll draw out A. And here, let's use the new feature I just found out about. Hey, that's not the one I want. There we go. There's a good real number line. So A goes from 0 inclusive up to 4.4. It's roughly there. Okay, so here we go. So if we wanted the intersection of all of these sets, since the intersection is binary, we can only actually do A intersect B first or B intersect C first. It doesn't really matter which we do, but we'll use the property that it is associative and we will just happen to choose A intersect B first. So that happens to be from 1.8 all the way up to 4.4. So that there is A intersect B shown as dashed lines. Hopefully that's good enough for us. So then if we take those dashed lines as a new set and intersect with C, Really, all we're getting is this set that consists of 2, 3, and 4. Ooh. So that example was good. It started out a little bit more complex than the last ones, but based on some simple properties of intersection, we got out a relatively simple set in the end. Okay, here we go. Let's try out the challenge problem. And I'll leave this one for you all to put into your course notes. The challenge problem goes like this. Suppose you have sets A1, A2, all the way up to AK, R intervals of real numbers. such that AI is equal to the set of all the X's such that zero is less than or equal to X is less than strict one over I for I equal one, two, all the way up to K. Okay, so there we go. Describe the set A1 intersect A2 intersect A3 intersect all the way up to the intersection with AK. So I want you to describe this set as a new, it will be simple, I'll give you that hint, set in the end. And in fact, one last piece for this video, this notation right here has a shortcut in the world of math where we write out the intersection from i equals 1 to k of the ai's. Isn't that some fancy shorthand notation? So I hope this video was a good introduction to the intersection. We saw some basic properties, some examples that range from easy to more difficult. And here at the end is a good challenge problem for you to try out.